If you call yourself an angler and you are not taking advantage of the springtime fishing season, I'm afraid that you are missing out. Whatever you call spring in your neck of the woods, whether it's February, March in Texas, or June, July in New York, spring is the best time of the year and it has the greatest opportunity for you to catch some crazy numbers of bass and the biggest bass of your life. In bass fishing, we have tons of different terminology when it comes to uh, describing what stage of the bass life cycle your fish are in. And in today's video, in reference to shallow, dirtier ponds and lakes, we're gonna talk about my top three lures for the pre-spawn time period, no matter where you are in the the country. My name is Tyler Anderson and let's talk about it. Folks at home, folks at home, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tyler Anderson and my goal on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video that you watch. And so as always, hit that subscribe button, check out all the links in the video description because there's tons of helpful information for you guys down there. We are all about helping you guys become better anglers. And of course, I'm all about becoming a better angler. I might know a lot about bass fishing, but there's still a ton that I don't know. And so I want you guys to be along with me on this journey. We are on the road to 200,000 subscribers. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. So the topic of this video, as I mentioned a second ago, is going to be my top three pre-spawn fishing lures for your shallow, dirtier bodies of water. So I'm talking about ponds and lakes. And what I mean by shallow, dirtier is that the water clarity is uh, less, less than three foot of water. I'd say three foot, three foot of water and less is what I would call stained water clarity. Anything more than three foot, I would call really clear water. And so I'm going to make a video talking about my top three or four or five, because I've got quite a few on that side, um, pre-spawn lures for your more deep, clear, rocky bodies of water, more of your reservoirs. But this video is going to be targeted towards a lot of you pond anglers and a ton of you just general shallower lake fishermen all across the country. Now, at this point in the video, I'm going to explain what the term pre-spawn means in bass fishing. So if you guys are already familiar, Familiar with that term, I will invite you guys to skip forward. I will have some timestamp down here that shows you guys that are familiar with the term pre-spawn what to skip to, uh, where I talk about the three lures. But of course, I want to talk about for you guys that don't know what that means, what the term pre-spawn means. So the, the bass's life cycle they really revolve around uh, eating, not being eaten and mating. It's really just those three things. Bass have a little pea brain. Uh, they're not very smart creatures, and so they don't really think about a whole lot of things besides those three. Like I mentioned, eating, not being eaten, and feeding. And the spawn, S-P-A-W-N, Thank you. The spawn is the term to describe the process of a male bass and a female bass getting together on what's called a bed, uh, where the male bass drops his, his fish sperm or whatever you call it, the female bass drops her eggs. And then from that, you have future generations of bass that hopefully a lot of them make it past that early season where they could potentially be, be eaten as little tiny bass fry. The bass spawn happens when the water temperature is going from cold, winter cold, to summer warm. And that spring season is when the spawn happens. And in my experience, most of the time, the spawn, the actual act of those bass getting shallow and mating happens in the 60, 60, you know, 60 degree, sometimes low 50, but mostly the 60 degree to low 70 degree water mark. And so in reference to that spawn period, you have two periods on either side of that. You have the pre-spawn and the post-spawn. In this video, we're gonna talk about the pre-spawn where the water temperature usually is in that, in that 50 to 60 degree range. And there's a few things I want you guys to understand about the pre-spawn before we jump into my favorite lures for this time period. And the first of those is that you have to understand that bass in this stage of their life, in this stage of the year, they almost always want to be feeding, which means they almost always will be in a mood to chase down your lures. When we have weather like we have today, mostly cloudy with a little bit of wind, it sets up perfectly for those fish to slide off of their deep water uh, areas that they were sitting at in the winter, move shallow and start feeding on your lure. And so with the exception of high sun, no wind and super clear water, as I'll discuss more in my other video coming out in a few days about pre-spawn for deep, clear rocky lakes. Uh, with the exception of that weather condition, those fish are going to be in a chasing mood. You're not gonna have to slow down and fish a, a soft plastic, a jig, Carolina rig. You can, and a lot of guys catch giant bass uh, in tournaments on huge lakes like Sam Rayburn, Toledo Bend, even lakes like I grew up on Lake Travis. There are big fish to be caught slow out deep in the pre-spawn. But for most of you guys out there that don't have access to fishing electronics, a nice bass boat, you're gonna wanna fish the areas that are closer to those spawning areas because that's more accessible to you. And so that's why I'm making a video that is more accessible to you guys. The second thing to understand is that not only 
only will the bass in the pre-spawn time period be wanting to chase down your lures to feed up, to get ready for the, the time when they spawn, when they are not eating for several weeks at a time, um, is that these fish will not necessarily suspend in the water as often as they will in clear water. I'm going to discuss that, like I said, in that video coming out. Uh, but these fish tend to use the bottom and structure more as their pathways to make their way from deep water to shallow water to spawn. And so but most of the lures that I throw are going to be, of course, in the water column, but they're going to be more oriented towards the bottom or towards the cover and structure. So with each one of these lures that I'm going to talk about, we're going to have one of my favorite fish catches of all time in the pre-spawn on this lure that comes right after the uh, the instructional portion. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the fish catches. But I say we hop into lure number one and we're going to go from uh, least weedless to most weedless because oftentimes those fish are, are going from their deeper areas to their shallow. The deeper areas aren't necessarily as, as snaggy. They don't have as many things for your lure to get snagged on. And then as the fish get more and more shallow, you have more things that your lure could get stuck on. So we're going to go not necessarily from best to worst or worst to best. We're just going to go from uh, least weedless to most weedless, starting with lure number one, which is the lipless crankbait. The lipless crankbait is by far my favorite lure to throw in the pre-spawn around grass. I absolutely love to throw a, a lipless crankbait like this, let it sink down near that grass, slowly tick that tick that lure, what, what I mean by tick is, is reel it very slowly across the top of that grass, and as soon as it grabs a clump of grass, you rip it out, and it causes a reaction strike, and those fish love hitting this thing. And so, like I mentioned, this thing is going to be for a little bit deeper water. I like throwing a half ounce of the Strike King Red Eye Shad. I like throwing it in, as I've talked about, in my uh, instructional video, which actually, for almost all these lures, I have a separate instructional video that's why I'm not going to go too deep on how to fish each one of these lures. This is just kind of a tier list video where if you are curious about how to fish pre-spawn in your shallow, muddier, you know, less clear water, this is going to help you make your lure selection a little bit easier. Um, but like I said, I want to fish this around uh, either deeper to shallow grass, so anywhere from 10 to 2 foot of water is where I throw this thing, but it really excels in that 5 to 6 foot of water range. And there's just something about a red or a green and red or a, an orange and red lipless crankbait that in the pre-spawn, like I said, that 50 to 60 degree water temperature just gets those fish going. With all the lures that I'm going to talk about in this video, I will have the exact combo that I throw this on, rod, reel, and line, linked in the video description below. Like I mentioned, there's tons of great stuff in the video description. And so I say without further ado, we see one of my favorite pre-spawn fish catches on the lipless crankbait. Uh. Oh, that is, that is a fish. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm glad that I didn't rip on that. <laughs> I was about to rip again like oh man I got stuck in some grass oh another big one another big one wow 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 oh woo woo hoo hoo oh man I hope I got that on camera oh biggin biggin folks I'm gonna try to start using drag oh my oh my that's a six pounder that's a six pounder there you are Bring your fat belly over here. Oh, 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 come on, come on. Don't do that to me. Yes, yes. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, swims right off. That's it. That's how you can tell these fish are healthy pre-spawn fish when they swim off like that. This is too good. Yeah. That one. Oh, this is big. This is not small. I don't, I don't, well, actually, no, he just kind of gave up. Yeah, I got one. I don't know how big it is, though. Holy crap. What the heck? Whoa. Whoa. Whoa there, buddy. Oh, no. Oh, my gracious. Uh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Daddy, can you grab the uh, the camera off the tripod and do handheld? Oh yeah, that thing's big. Yeah, that's big. I don't know, but he's very weak. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, son. Okay. I gave a cast in Mr. Pop's direction and uh, just stole, uh, <laughs> stole his fish. That was good, man. That's big. Oh, that's big. This is real big. That's worth getting wet for. Oh, let's go! Oh man, that Hold is a uh, that's a that is a. I've never seen a fish 
quite that wide. That thing is, uh, that thing's unbelievable. Oh man. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> oh, the fish, like, it felt big at first, and then it just kind of gave up. I was like a two pounder, but. I, no. you go, I think it's big. But wow. That's a bad How's that lighting look? Beautiful. Oh, uh, yes. Dark, little dark. Let's go. So with the lipless crankbait done, I say we move on to lure number two for my pre-spawn in shallow, dirtier lakes and ponds, and that is going to be the chatterbait. The chatterbait, or also known as the generic name, the vibrating jig, is uh, one of those lures that I feel like all of us is, at this point in, their, in, in bass fishing have thrown, and if not, it's about time you hop on the bandwagon. There is just something special about the chatterbait that allows it to be one of the most versatile shallow water fishing lures and is just an absolute fish catcher all year round, but especially has a place on my boat deck and in my tackle box from the months of February to April. Now, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot about how to fish this thing or what makes it so special because like I mentioned, I've made instructional videos on all of these and I'm very proud of the chatterbait instructional video that I will have linked below and it'll pop up in the corner over here so make sure you guys after this video go check out those videos as well it helps me out in the algorithm if you guys watch one video and then the other so that would be super great if y'all would and the information on the chatterbait is uh, I think worth watching I think the reason why the chatterbait is so successful is because uh, of the range of colors it can imitate anything those bass are eating so whether it's crawfish bluegill or bait fish uh, it can be fished in any water column at basically any speed and so it's just a fantastic lure so let's see one of my favorite fish catches from the pre-spawn on the chatterbait. There's one. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh my goodness. Big in, big in, big in, yep. Um, now we're gonna boat flip him. Oh, good one. Good one. Good, good, good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll take it. I'll take that one. Get in here, buddy. Come on. No, I left too much line out. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. There we go, baby. First big fish of the day on the Thunder Cricket. What's that, four, you think? Yeah. yeah that's, that's a, that's a thick fish. fish. That right there is one, what you want to see in the pre-spawn. So working our way from least weedless to most weedless, we're going to put the chatterbait away and get to lure number three, which is the spinnerbait. So if y'all have been around the channel for a while, you know that I used to hate the spinnerbait. Didn't really have a reason why, I just didn't really think it was that effective. I thought the chatterbait and the lipless crankbait could do just as good of a job, as well as a square bill crankbait in certain scenarios. And the spinnerbait was just kind of an old school lure. Until I got in certain situations, specifically flooded timber in very, very shallow grass, that I realized the spinnerbait is incredibly effective there. The two spinnerbaits that I throw, depending on the water clarity, if it's very, very cold water and very dirty water, I'm gonna throw a color like this, more of a chartreuse with, in my experience, it's best to throw an orange kicker blade, have one of the two Colorado blades be either spray painted orange or buy a spinnerbait that has an orange blade. Strike King, for some odd reason, doesn't make an orange bladed spinnerbait, so I just custom make my own. And if the water is clear, I love throwing this new Strike King, I think it's the pro model spinnerbait in, uh, in any sort of shad variation. But uh, the spinnerbait really finds its, its, its place in my tackle box in the pre-spawn when those fish are very close to spawning and they are up in that shallow, shallow water, especially shallow bushes and shallow trees, and you want to fish a reaction bait to find out where those fish are before you slow down with a soft plastic or a jig. I don't think there's a better lure for that than a spinnerbait. And so here's one of the legendary catches on my channel from the exact pre-spawn situation I'm talking about on the spinnerbait. So that was lure number three, the spinnerbait. We're gonna throw in one wild card lure as I talked about earlier, and that is going to be the suspending jerkbait. Now the suspending jerkbait is most often known as a clear water lure. 
you know, bass love to, 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 to see these things from a long way away, kind of check them out, come scope them out, and eventually nab these things in clear water. But I have found that they are becoming increasingly more popular in that dirtier water, especially around brush piles. Major League Fishing Pro Dustin Connell just recently won the Red Crest Championship for $300,000, throwing a, uh, I believe it was like literally this exact same jerkbait right here, a Strike King deep diving jerkbait over brush piles in Lake Eufaula in Alabama, which has some pretty dang dirty water. I mean, his water clarity was maybe like a foot of water. I'm guessing it was actually less than that. And he was still able to get a fish on the jerkbait. Now, the reason why the jerkbait is my wild card is because, like I said, uh, it's more of a target oriented thing. So I'm going to throw a jerkbait on the side of a dock. I'm going to throw it on a brush pile, but I'm not just going to cover water in dirty water with a jerkbait. It's just not as effective as the other ones that I mentioned, especially around bushes and, and wood. That's not a great idea, of course, unless your brush piles are down on the bottom and you're working it up above, which is how they are meant to be fished in and around wood. But I just wanted to throw this out there because I have caught many fish in dirty, shallower water on a jerkbait. It's just not one of my favorites that I reach to first. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and learned something about bass fishing. I love teaching you guys all about how to catch more fish. And so if I have failed in my mission today, please let me know in the comment section below what I could do better. Again, all the links to, to the, the external videos, the instructionals for all these lures I talked about will be linked in the video description. And we'll see you next time. And trust me, folks, we've got some awesome spawn content coming, teaching you guys how to catch them when you can see them and when you can't. And we'll see you next time here on TRF.